there, fellow freedivers. I'm Marianto, a Motion Ops freediving instructor and part of the Motion Ops team. I'm also an amateur competitor, and today I'll be your host as we dive into the main rules of freediving competitions and how to earn a white card. In the previous video, we talked about pool competitions, and now the depth season is starting, it's a perfect moment to cover this topic. Remember, to stay in touch with all the big freediving competitions, follow the Motion Ops website, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Our team makes awesome reports of all the competitions so you can enjoy the best way and cheer for your favorite athlete. Now, let's get started. First, let's talk about white cards. In freediving, a white card is the official certification that validates your performance. It represents your accomplishment and compliance with the rules and safety standards set by recognized freediving organizations like AIDA or CMAS. Safety. Safety is paramount in depth freediving competitions. The main rules aim to ensure athletes' safety in the first place. Every freediver must have a dedicated safety diver or team assigned to them. These safety divers monitor the diver's descent and ascent, provide support and assistance if needed, and are prepared to intervene in case of an emergency. Official depth measurements. In competitions, the depth reached by the freediver is measured using a weighted line or sled with depth markings. The freediver must perform the dive along this line and the measurement is taken from the surface to the deepest point reached by the diver before the ascent. Here are the main areas that AIDA and CMAS cover when it comes to depth freediving competitions. Announcement performance. Announcement must be made within a time frame, usually the day before the dive. All the athletes make announcements at the same time, so you can't make yours based on your opponent's announcement. That's an interesting part of looking at the start list. Athletes already realize what place they can take if everyone gets a white card. Arriving to the event. Athletes must arrive minimum one hour before their official top to the designated competition area and report to a judge. Warm up. Athletes have 45 minutes before their official top to perform their warm up dives if desired. They are not allowed to be in the water before then. The countdown. Athletes receive a minimum amount of time, two minutes in AIDA and three minutes in CMAS, in their start zone before their official top. Many times the schedule is set up so athletes have a bit more time, but the rule states that the countdown should begin with this minimum amount of time available for each athlete. Begin the dive. Athletes must begin their dive, meaning their airways are underwater after their official top, but no longer than 30 seconds. In depth competitions, start times can be delayed due to bad conditions such as waves or strong currents or other valuable reasons. Surface protocol. In AIDA, you have 15 seconds to remove all your facial equipment, show an OK sign and say, I'm OK. It must be done in this exact order and the start of the protocol is considered when you start removing your facial equipment. Only facial wipe or hood removal can interfere with the protocol. In CMAS, you will have 20 seconds instead of 15 and you don't need to remove your facial equipment. Only show the OK sign. You don't need to say anything, just show a connecting finger sign. To get a white card, you need to reach your announced depth and bring a tag to the judges. If an athlete turns early, he gets penalty points and a yellow card. Protest. After the announcement of preliminary results, athletes have a set amount of time, which is announced by organizers, to submit their protest. Once all the protests are reviewed and judges check the bottom camera videos, the results become official. If there was a world record, it becomes valid only after a doping test results come back. Penalizations. Here are some things that may be penalized with a yellow or red card during competition. When the realized performance is less than the announced performance, you will receive a yellow card. No tag is also a yellow card. Late start is a red card. Protocol mistake, blackout or airways dipping after surfacing is also a red card. Pulling in constant weight, constant weight by fins or no fins is a red card. Assistance or speech from a coach after surfacing in CMOS only is a red card. Late check-ins for a competition day or an early warm-up is also red card. It's crucial to note that these are just some of the main rules and guidelines in depth freediving competitions. To participate, it's essential to thoroughly understand and adhere to the specific rules and regulations set by the organization body of the competition. In the Motion Ops Wave 4 course, we teach competition procedures, preparing for events, proper training periodization, coaching, and other important competition-related topics. After completing the course, you'll be very well prepared for your first competition or your next competition. Thank you for joining me today as we explore more of the world of depth free diving competitions and the journey to earn that coveted white card. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more informative content. Remember, safety, training, and knowledge are key in achieving success in depth free diving. Dive deep, dive safe, but most of all, dive happy. See you underwater.